Greetings, everybody, and welcome to Gizmo Labs, the place where I show you all the tips and tricks you need to become a pro at Grounded Playgrounds. Have you ever wanted to make a combination lock that is different for every player that enters your world on every playthrough? So that every time someone comes in and playtests your world, no one is actually going to know the combination and they're not going to be able to pass it around to other players to immediately get through your map. Better yet, have you wanted to make it into some kind of light or sound puzzle just like the one in front of me here? Well, in today's episode, I'm going to show you how to do just that. So guys, without any further ado, let's get started! Before we go ahead and make this thing, I want to go ahead and show you a demonstration of how it works. As you can see, if we come over here, it says find a way to make all the bugs sound, and then press the button to see if you got it right. So first of all, let's go ahead and just press the button and see what happens. So as you can see, the firefly, the sting bug, and the moth sound played. So what happens if we flip one of these switches? Let's go ahead and flip this one and see what happens. Play it again. Okay, so this time, the stink bug one didn't play, so it seems that flipping these switches turns these bug sounds on and off. So therefore, because the stink bug one did play initially, we can go ahead and turn this one off, but the B didn't play, so what happens if we go ahead and turn this one on? Is this now the correct combination, making all four of the bug sound? Let's find out. It looks like it is, and as you can see, the door now opens. The best part about this design is if I go ahead and come out of this view and go back into play mode again to essentially simulate a new player trying out your world, let's go ahead and try again. Let's go ahead and press the button again and see what the combination is. As you can see, this time the B and the Sting Pug didn't play. So if we go ahead and do this one, the combination for this playthrough is actually the first and the third switch. So let's go ahead and press the button now. And as you can see, now all the four bug sounds are going to play, and we've opened the door. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make one just like this, but you don't have to make it a sound puzzle, you can even make it a light puzzle, or any other kind of puzzle that you want. This is also going to be using the new randomizers that have been introduced in the latest public test build. So, let's go ahead and get started on making our own. The first thing you're going to want to do is build a structure that looks something like this. As you can see, I've got some ash walls right here, I've got some switches, and above those switches, I've got some bug mounts. These are going to imitate the bug sounds that need to play in order for this door to open. Finally, on the other side, I've got a button here that is going to be used to check whether all four sounds play, and then open the door if it's correct. This door right here has also been customized to be locked, so make sure that this door is set to locked, otherwise the player is just going to be able to walk through it. Once you've got a setup like this, we're ready to go ahead and begin inserting all the logic that we're going to need to make this work. So let's go ahead and get started with that. The first thing we're going to need to do is get ourselves some switch gizmos. And we're going to need four of these, and I'm going to place them a little bit of a ways in front of my switch. You have to place them a little far away and it will become important later because there's some more stuff we're going to place behind these later on. So first of all, we're going to place all four of these down. And then if you look at them and press E, it will actually go ahead and turn these on. You do need these to be activated, otherwise the circuit will actually work in reverse and you don't want that to happen. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and link all of these switches to these switch gizmos right here. So we're gonna go ahead and take all these and we're going to link them up just like this. For each of these links, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn activate on switched on to toggle activate and the same for switched off. So when this switch is on or off, instead of just activating and deactivating, it's actually going to toggle whether that switch is activated. This will ensure that if a switch is off and I turn the switch off, it doesn't just remain off, it'll actually toggle it back to on. So essentially we want to make sure that this behavior is set to toggle for all of these arrows right here. So let's go ahead and make sure that's all done. And then that should work correctly next up. Now we've done those switches over there, we're going to move to the other side of the construction by this button. We're going to go ahead and get a counter with condition, and we're going to make sure that this says equal to one. It should do by default, but just in case it doesn't in future versions of Playgrounds, make sure it says equal to one. We're then going to go ahead and take a signal from our button via a link like this, and we're going to make sure that this link says increment when the button is pressed. 
Next up, let's go ahead and grab ourselves a timer and we're gonna put it pretty close to this counter with condition. And we're gonna set this timer to five seconds. Your timer essentially here has to be set to one more second than the number of creatures you have along your wall. So if you're making a larger version of this setup, say with eight creatures, you will need to set the timer to nine seconds. If you're making one with 20 creatures, you'll need to set the timer to 21 seconds because we need to allow enough time for all the sounds to play. We're gonna go ahead and then disable start on play and we're then going to take a signal from our button and we're going to link it directly to our timer. When the button is pressed, we want to make sure this link says start timer and not toggle timer because otherwise some weird behavior will happen. Once the timer has elapsed, we're going to make a link from this one to our counter with condition and we're going to set the value of that counter to zero. Finally, I want to make our button have a visual indication of when it's ready to be pressed again. So what I want to happen is when the button's pressed, it's going to change color. Now we can do that by taking a signal from our counter with condition here and we can go ahead and put it into our button right here. Then we're going to go ahead into this and in this link here, we're going to set this to customize and we're gonna choose a different color for our button. Let's go ahead and choose a value somewhere in the middle. Finally, from our timer, I also want to take another signal back into our button here. And once this timer has elapsed, I want the button to return to its normal color. So if we go ahead then into this one, it's gonna go ahead and customize it and then we're gonna set the color back to zero, zero, which is the default one. If you've set a different default color for your button, however, then you do want to go ahead and turn this into whatever that color was on this link above your timer leading back into the button. What we should find now is if we enter play mode, we're gonna go ahead and press this button. It will turn into a different color. And then when it's ready to be pressed again, it should turn back into red, just like that. Now that we've got the button on the right working, it's time to link all these switches and this button into some logic to determine whether the door should open or not. So let's go ahead and do that. The first thing we're gonna go and do is grab one of these switch gates, which from now on I'm probably gonna refer to as a logic gizmo because then it determines the difference from a switch gate to a switch gizmo. They're very similar and therefore it makes it harder to kind of understand. So this one with the brain, I'm just gonna to refer to now as a logic gizmo, just for a bit of clarity. We're gonna go ahead and make sure this is changed from any to all. Now this is very important, otherwise the door will open when you press that button, even if these switches are not correct. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and take a signal from here and we're going to, uh, to go ahead and put it into this logic gate right here. And then we're gonna go ahead and make sure that it only evaluates when the condition passes. If it fails, we don't want any evaluation to occur because well, there's really no need to do that, right? Next up, we're gonna go ahead and take a signal from each of these switch gizmos into our logic one. So we're gonna go ahead and take one of these. And for each of these, we want to turn all evaluation off for both behaviors. You'll know if you've done it right because your arrow from your switch gizmo to your logic one will be in gray. We want to make sure that all these arrows are actually gray. So we're gonna do this for each one. We're gonna set these both to none when we modify our links. Then we're gonna do the same for this one. And again, set it to none. So a little bit of running back and forth here. So we're gonna set the one again to none and none. And then finally for this fourth one, we're gonna go ahead and again, set this to none and none. So we'll link these all up and then we'll set these to none. The reason we're doing this is because we do not want this switch thing here to evaluate when we're flipping these switches. We only want this thing to evaluate when we push this button to check if our combination is right. Otherwise, you may end up finding that the door might open slightly early or a random sound will play and that's nothing that you really want to happen. So we're gonna make sure that that's all fine. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and sort out the logic for when the door opens. First of all, we want to go ahead and grab a timer and we're gonna go ahead and put this down right here. Then we're going to change our timer so that it does not start on play and it's going to have a four second delay. This timer needs to have an equivalent delay to however many creatures you have up on your wall. So if you have 10 creatures, this timer will be set to a 10 second delay. If you have 200, then it'll be set to a 200 second delay. Not that you can actually get that long. You could probably have up to 60 seconds. We're gonna go ahead and move this to Nina up a bit and then we're going to link this to our timer from our logic gizmo here. Now, when the condition passes, we want to start the timer but when it fails, we do not want to stop the timer. Next up, we're going to head and link this to our door. 
and we're going to set it so that one, the, once the time has elapsed, the door will unlock first, and then it will go ahead and open, allowing the player to go through. Finally, let's go ahead and make it play a nice effect when the door opens as well. So let's go ahead and get one of these effect spawners, and I'm going to put it pretty much right next to my door in the front here, along the direction where it opens. And once the timer has elapsed, I also want this effect to play as well. Let's go ahead and choose the... I think we could probably use the super duper effect and then we'll go ahead and turn this to full like this. So when the door opens, we'll have a nice little effect that also plays. The next thing I want to do is go ahead and sort out the randomizer part of this entire setup. Now, we're going to be using these brand new random selector gizmos that just got introduced in the public test very recently. So we're going to go ahead and select one of these and we're going to go ahead and put this down right here. With this, I'm going to go ahead and link it to each one of my switch gizmos right here. So we're going to link all of these up together. Next, I'm going to take this one that I just linked and we're actually going to duplicate it three times. So we're going to go ahead and do one here in front of this one, one here in front of this one, and a third one in front of that one right there. Now we want to go ahead and alter the behavior of these other three random selectors that we just duplicated. We're going to go into this one and we're going to say we want it to select two links. In this one, we want it to select three links. And in this one, we want it to go and select four links. Now, of course, if you've got more creatures, you will need to duplicate this randomizer more times and then set it to select five links, six links, etc., and so on, up to the maximum number of creatures that you have. Next, we're going to go ahead and grab another random selector and we're going to go ahead and put it in front of all of these. And then I'm going to go ahead and link this to our other ones just like this. And finally, we're going to get ourselves a timer and we're going to make sure that this is in front of our randomizer here. We want this to be one second delay to start on play. And once the timer has elapsed, we want to set this to select links. Once this is all done, what should happen is when the player spawns in the world, this timer will tick for a second, and this randomizer is going to choose one of these four destinations. If it chooses this randomizer, one of these four switches will become deactivated. If it chooses two, then two of these four will become deactivated, and so on. So essentially, this is going to control the random combination that gets set into our lock as we begin. Next up, we're going to go ahead and work on the sound module here. So we're going to go ahead, first of all, and get ourselves a few speakers. And we're going to put these pretty much directly in front of the switches right here. So I'm going to put one speaker here, one over here, one over here, and one over here. For each of these speakers, we wanted to set it to the sound of the bug that is displayed in the display there. So we're going to go ahead. The first one, of course, is an orb weaver. So we're going to go ahead and get one of those. So it's very, very far down. Um, next one we're going to go ahead and select is of course going to be the ladybird so we're going to go ahead and go all the way down again and hopefully we can find uh, hopefully we can find this pretty quickly because it does take a while to find these um but there we go we've got uh, ladybird aggro third one we're going to go ahead and set this to a water flea so again just going to go ahead and scroll all the way down here and we're going to select water flea there we go so water flea right there and then lastly we're going to go ahead and grab this one and we're going to set this one to a wasp. So we're going to go all the way down again because, yeah, the bug sounds are usually found at the bottom. And we're going to set this one to a wasp. There we go. So once we've got all these set up, we need to make these sounds play in a sequence. So in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of extra logic based on our switches. We only want to play the sounds if the switches are in the correct position, i.e. that these gizmos are turned on. However, remember, some of them are going to be turned off based on our randomizer, so we need to add some additional logic to check which ones are on and which ones are not before playing our sound. We're going to go ahead and get one of these logic gizmos, and we're going to go ahead and change this to all. Next up, we're going to go and duplicate this for the number of switches that we have. In my case, it's going to be four, and I'm going to put these just behind the switches here, here, and here. Next up, we want to take a signal from each switch and link it to our logic gizmos just like this. So we're going to go ahead and link these guys up there, there, there and there. I'm actually going to move that one over a bit so it's a little bit neater looking. Once we've done that, we need to make sure 
that these links are in gray. So we want to turn off any, all evaluation must be disabled. Otherwise we're gonna start having random sounds play when we flip the switches, which we obviously don't want to happen. So we just need to make sure that all of these evaluations when we switch the switch on are disabled. And you'll know if these slightly small arrows appear in gray like this. So we're gonna go ahead and disable all these and we're gonna go ahead and disable all these. So here we go. So we got that one and we've got that one. Next up, we want to make it go ahead and play the sound, but we also need to have some delay so that all sounds don't play together. The first sound can play immediately, so we can actually go ahead and take a link from our logic gizmo and say when the condition is passed, it will activate the sound. Next up, we're going to go ahead and make another timer. I'm going to put it between these two. We're going to go ahead and, we're going to go ahead and edit the timer and we're going to set this to one second and do not start on play. We're actually going to then duplicate this timer and then put it here and here between these other two. And of course, if you have more of these, you'll need to make more timers. The second timer, we're going to set for two seconds. And the third timer, we're going to set for three seconds, just like that. And if you have more, then you're going to set it for four seconds, five seconds, etc., for as many timers as you have. Next, we're going to go ahead and take a signal from each of our logic gizmos into our timers like this. So we're going to link these together. And then for each of these, we want to make sure that when the condition is passed, it starts the timer. But if the condition fails, it doesn't stop the timer because otherwise you might get some weird behavior. We're going to do it for each one of those. So we want to set it to none if condition is failed. There we go. Now we're going to go ahead and take a signal from our timer. I'm going to go ahead and put it into each of these sound boards here. And now they should play the sounds when we press the button. However, currently these aren't going to do anything because they're not actually linked to the button. When the button is pressed, it's going to go ahead and evaluate this counter. And if it's equal to one, we can take a signal from each of these and link it to each of our logic gizmos over here. This will make it so that when the button is pressed, these sounds will then play. And for whichever ones are true, each one will play. And this is essentially the basic setup of the uh, of the combo lock. So now we're going to go ahead and go ahead and do this. And we're going to press the button first to evaluate the sounds. So it looks like for this one, the only sound that we need to play and activate is the Orb Weaver. So there we go. That one needs to be activated. So if we try it again now. And there we go. The door goes ahead and opens and then we can go through. However, we do want to add a few more visuals to this to make it a little bit more appealing. So let's go ahead and do that. For the visual side of things, it would be nice if we had a quest marker telling us what we had to do in order to open the door. Now, this, of course, is optional, but sometimes it might be something that you want to kind of guide the player with. We're going to put a quest marker down here and we're going to set it to display when your, your player is only near. And then we're going to go ahead and customize this. And we need to um, we go need to go and say make um, all the bugs sound to open the door. There we go. And then we're going to go ahead and get this quest marker again. And we're actually going to put it to this button right over here. And then we're just going to go ahead and change the text on this one. And we're going to say, press the button, check you got it right. Just like that. There we go. So if we go now into play mode, we should see now that it says make all the bug sounds to open the door over here and then press the button to check you got it right. There we go. So that will be that part done. Next up, I also want to add a couple of effects to each of these bugs to make it so that when they actually make their sound, you see like a little sound wave come out of each one of them. This is actually pretty easy to do. And all we need for that is to use these effect spawners. I'm going to put one down here for now. And we're going to go and change this effect here to the broodmother screech or this broodmother roll. Here we go. We're going to make it not play a sound. So we just wanted to not play the sound and we're going to make the uh, we're going to go ahead and turn this to a smaller area of effect. Then we're going to go ahead and put this pretty much directly under each of these bugs. It might be helpful for you guys to go into handy that to do this so you can fly up a little bit and place it right under them like that. So we're going to place one under here and then we're going to dupe this guy. I'm going to place it under each of these. So we're going to place one here 
we're going to place one under here and finally we're going to place one under here like that now what we need to do is make these effects things go in the same order as the sounds play now you could say oh well i'll just take a signal from these things and make it run but we also want these things to play if a sound doesn't play so a better solution for this is to actually take a signal and then route it over there using a transmitter and a receiver and then handle the timing a little bit more separately so first of all, we're going to set our transmitter down here. Now, for me, it's on channel one. If you have something different, however, you're going to need to go ahead and change the channel if you already have something using channel one. But what I want to do is when this counter is equal to one, I want to send a signal on channel one. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and then we're going to put a receiver for channel one right over here. So we're going to go ahead and put this just over here. And I guess I can put it a bit further away. And then this is going to go ahead and first of all, once we get a signal, we're going to play that first sound right there. Then all we need to do is set a one second delay between each of these sounds so we can use a timer right here. I guess I'll just go ahead and put it right there. And we're going to go ahead and set this timer to one second and not start on play. We're going to need three of these timers. So I'm going to put another one over here and another one over right here. And then each of these timers, we're going to go ahead and link into the effects thing right here. So we're going to link it to each of these effect spawners like that. So once the timers elapsed, it will go ahead and do that. Now all we need to do is essentially link our receiver into each one of these timers and then link, the, link these timers together in sequence like this. So we're going to link them together like this, like this, like this. And finally, another very important thing, make sure this is not set to toggle timer. We want this to always be set to start timer. Timers have weird behavior if it's set to toggle. If a timer has already ended, for example, the toggle timer won't actually start it again. It will actually t it'll actually send an end result rather than begin the timer again. So it can cause a few issues. But now we should have everything we need to make the setup work and it should go ahead and provide us a nice little immersive experience. So finally, let's go ahead and make our way into play mode and test this out. So first of all, let's go ahead and press the button to see what we get. So it looks like the third sound played, but the fourth one didn't. So our combination for this is going to go ahead and be these three, right? So we're going to go ahead and do that. And let's see what happens. We press it to see if we got it right. And there we go. We got it right. And as you can see, the door went ahead and opened. And the best part is, if we go ahead and try this again, it'll be a different combination. So if I press to see if we got it. This time, I've got to turn on all of these three switches like that. And then we go and press the button. And as you can see, the door then goes ahead and opens. And with that, guys, this concludes our tutorial on how to make a randomized combination lock door with a sound puzzle in order to help the player. Remember, you don't just have to have four of these. You can make this essentially have as many sounds as you like, essentially probably up to 50 based on the maximum number of the randomizer. So I hope you found this useful and I hope you can make this into your own worlds to incorporate some more randomness and to make sure that players can't just get the correct combination and then cheese through the map the second time around, nor can they give the combination to other players to just get through. Now they're going to have to sit and work it out. <laughs> As a creative map maker, though, I hope this has really, really helped you out. If you do want to see anything else explained in more detail, like other gadgets and gizmos, or if you would like me to go ahead and uh, do more tutorials, if you have any particular requests, be sure to come and let me know in the comments you can also catch me on my discord a link is in the description and if you want to see me doing some arena builds live or just playing grounded in general you can catch me streaming on both youtube and twitch as well so hopefully i might see some of you guys there because i would love to talk more about the playgrounds especially if you want me to show you stuff live on stream which of course i'm also quite happy to do but guys that's gonna be all from me thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this one and i will hopefully see you in another one so guys until then bye